Dude, there's a the time when he's talking about walking into the ring that as he steps in the ring, like all the nervousness, all the things he's going through, says, and that as his confidence builds as he gets towards the ring and he steps through the ropes, I'm a god. He's one of those guys, one of those super winners. Mike Tyson was just a, a just a phenom, a thing that we had never seen before. He was the pit bull with no leash that that respected one person. Make the strong stronger or the weak weaker. Cause life is gonna be everybody a bad hand. No one's gonna leave here without being tried. Nowadays it's like the um everybody's um believe that someone should give them something. Yeah, everybody nobody wants to work now. Everybody everybody especially kids that have wealthy parents like myself, they don't most of them don't wanna do what they should do. It's listen, this is the real deal. If I don't do well in boxing, I go to prison or I die. What was it like trying to make it out of the streets of New York and making your money? How well, much it, it looked impossible. That wasn't gonna never happen. I never even dreamed about getting out of New York. I dreamed about living there, robbing and stealing and dying on the same block I was born on. Had no idea this was gonna happen. When did you realize like you are stronger than the average human being? Yeah, all of the tough guys and the criminal guys wanted to hang out with me then. They put me in their gang. Now I could be in their gang. <laughs> And they always say, get him, snatch that board, snatch his watch, snatch his purse, snatch this, snatch that. And that's what our crew was about. Nine years old, 9, 10, 11. Yeah, 9, 10, 11. So, so now go, go, 11, 12, 13, what happens next? So Get arrested. I went to a, um, a place called Sparf, it's like a um, correctional center. And, my, and we watched the movie The Greatest, like, and they turned on the lights and Muhammad Ali came in. And for some strange reason, I said, I want to be like him. And then I get transferred from the place that I saw Muhammad Ali to this other facility, you know, for real bad kids. And um, I met a gentleman there that was a boxer and he used to teach me how to box. And one day I broke his nose, right? And um, he got mad, I didn't know he was mad, but he's mad that his wife didn't want him to box me no more and that's why he was mad. So he took me to a great trainer named Customato and that's why I'm here. So your inspiration happened at 12 years old. Yeah. Then you meet Cus. Yes. How was Cus treating you? What happened for you to be this, loyal? Um, what was his way of leading you? This uh, degree of just peeling all that dirt and stuff, that insecurity and um, developing into character. And um, that's why I had a wonderful time with him. Because everything about, everything about his life was about me. And so I never had a father. But um, I know what it's like to want to make a father happy. And so I want to be champion to make him happy. You know, Cus knows when to put the gas on, when to put the brakes on. You know, that's what a teacher does. He's a teacher. We all, we all teach everyone. All of us teach everyone. We all teach a student. This world is one big school and we're the students of this world. So he, he knew timing and he knew uh, when, when to motivate and when not to motivate. Absolutely. Okay. He, is, he knows the mind is always hungry. The mind wants to do good, but we get so many negative thoughts in our mind, it's almost overwhelming to be positive. Cus is working with you, he trains you, and then all of a sudden you start fighting 
at what point did you know that you could be the heavyweight champion? Like, hey, you got a fight, you got two fights, you got three fights. I'm 14. What? 14 years old, yeah. you knew you were going to... You have to be the champion before you become the champion, so that means lifestyle. <laughs> you have to be him before you become him. You got to be him before you become him. Um, you have to live his lifestyle. And at 14 years old, I'm willing to Absolutely. do everything it takes to be a champion? Absolutely. And then I had Cuss over there telling me, why, why should he have it? That's one thing I never had in my life, because I always got picked on, and I never had jealousy or enviness about anything. And Cuss possessed that, you know, and he was telling me, why should he have all that money and you don't? Why is he, why, 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 why do you believe that he's better than you? Why do you think he should have all that money and you don't? And he was really serious about it. And that's with the competition shit. That's it right there, breathing that stuff right in me. Why should, why should he have it and he's not better than you? And that hurt my feelings. I said, I'll make sure the whole world's gonna be afraid of me. And once I'm involved in something, I want to know the beginning of it. I want to know where it came from, how it was started, who's the first guy that invented it. That's just how my mind works. I was born for it. So, so boxing, you're coming up. You're coming up at 14, you know you're going to be a champion. During that time, whatever's Cus telling you, you're doing it, you're not questioning yeah. it, you're fully coachable to him, you're committed to him, you believe he can help you become a champion. Yeah, but well, during that process, yeah. I'm losing too. I'm getting beat, I'm getting knocked out. I'm never getting discouraged though. I have to believe that we're divine and that we learn from our experience because confidence breeds success and success breeds confidence. They go hand in hand. You can inspire desire, but can you teach it? I don't know. I never had to try to teach anybody that. Nobody had to teach you to fire because you had it. It was, it was within you. Well, no, it wasn't definitely within me. You know, somebody had to bring it out and show that I deserved to have what I did. I had to, to learn self-love. You know, no, I don't care how great you are, how much you succeed. Without self-love, you're nothing. Because self-love is discipline. And discipline is doing what you hate to do, but do it like you love it. What was it like when Cus passed away? Like, how did you handle when it first happened? When you Not got there? Not good. Not good. Did the focus go away? Did the no, it intensified. Oh, really? Yeah. The whole objective is your total surrender, your total domination. I'm gonna destroy you. That's the mind. That's why Rogan said when he watched you, you were intimidating. You, you know, your rage is a very unique rage, uh, Mike. Well, that's their fault to be intimidated. How are you gonna let somebody scare you for something you worked for? Wow. You have to give it to them without a struggle. Wow. Everybody here is gonna fight for what they love for. Yeah. Even if they never had a fist fight in their life, they're gonna fight. Mike, I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm thinking, hey, I wanna, in a different industry, okay? I wanna be the best of the best of the best. Like, you became a heavyweight champion, youngest ever. If I wanna be the best in my sport, say this business, what tips would you give me? Find out the first guy that really, really succeeded on this shit, probably 1900 or something like that. Even if he was a crook, let's go from there and go from all the way there and read all the way till you get to you. Okay? So one, study history. Yeah, study, study it till it gets to you. And then you realize those people were just you in funny clothes. You, you, you read everything they did, now you practice it. Now let's see what this shit really works. While I'm in the dressing room, five minutes before I come out, my gloves are laced up. I'm breaking my gloves down. I'm, I'm pushing the lever in the back of my I'm breaking the middle of the gloves so my knuckle could pierce through the leather. I feel my knuckle piercing against the tight leather gloves on the Everlast boxing glove. When I come out, I have supreme confidence. But I'm scared to death. I'm totally afraid. I'm afraid of everything. I'm afraid of losing. I'm afraid of being humiliated. But I'm totally confident. The closer I get to the ring, the more confidence I get. The closer, the more confidence I get. The closer, the more confidence I get. 
All day in my training, I've been afraid of this man. I thought this man might be capable of beating me. I've dreamed of him beating me. But I always stayed afraid of him. But as close as I get to the ring, I'm more confident. Once I'm in the ring, I'm a god. No one can beat me. I walk around the ring, but I never, I never take my eyes off my opponent. I keep my eyes on him, even if he's ready and pumping. He can't wait to get his hands on me as well. I keep my eyes on him. I keep my eyes on him. I keep my eyes on him. Then once I see a chink in his arm, boom! If one of his eyes may move, and then I know I have him. Then when he comes to the center of the ring, he still looks at me with his piercing look, and as if he's not afraid. But he already made that mistake when he, when he looked down for that one tenth of a second. I know I had him. He'll fight hard for the first two or three rounds, but I know I already broke his spirit. During the fight, I'm supremely confident. I'm moving my head, he's throwing punches. I'm making a miss and I'm countering. I'm hitting him to the body, I'm punching him real hard. And I'm punching him, and I'm punching him, I know he's not able to take my punches. One, two, three punches, I'm throwing him butt punches and bunches. He goes down, he's out. I'm victorious. Mike Tyson, greatest fighter ever lived.